All right, everyone. Paul Joseph Watson and Molyneux and some others uh, have been uh, proven correct here because the Democrats appear to have forced out Franken and Conyers as a prelude to saying to Trump, please, Mr. Trump, people have alleged that you've done things sexually wrong. We're calling on you to resign. And of course, uh, another reason for this. And I said this as soon as it was announced Franken and Conyers were out, I was like, oh, Democrats are going to morally grandstand on this. They're going to try to cast their, because they have a huge problem with apparently a dozen of their major donors and fundraisers, some of their celebrity party pals, and a couple of their <laughs> sitting Congress people being perverted allegedly. They're going to be, they're going to try to blame shift onto the Republicans by fixating on a couple of their problems. They're not even talking about Fahrenheit, by the way. Fahrenheit's the one they could actually legitimately do this about. Fahrenheit settled his case, he used taxpayer money to do it. That's really similar to a Conyers situation. Instead, they want to talk about Roy Moore and Donald Trump talk about a sitting president about who most of these accusers quickly backed off and said nothing more possibly because it was meant to derail his presidential campaign and they were paid off to say that now i'm not joking and then with uh with roy moore again like with some of the democrats we've got accusation but we don't have further proof we don't have a picture like franken we don't have a settlement like fair honestly Fahrenheit, who's a republican or conyers who's a democrat the sex abuse stuff goes beyond party, but the Democrats are trying to make it a partisan issue. Now, this could bite them in the ass if the Republicans maneuver properly uh, and they get rid of Fahrenheit and they say, well, yeah, we got rid of our, you know, alleged pervert. He, he settled this case with taxpayer funds, so we decided to skip the ethics committee and say, come on, Fahrenheit, go away. You can have your pension and that's all you're going to get, you know, out of Congress, you're, you're done in politics. They should do that. But then they should make it clear to the American people the truth, which is, Frank, with Franken, there's a picture. With Farron Hold and Conyers, there are settlements. You don't have such further evidence for Trump or for Judge Roy Moore. Roy Moore is probably about to win his seat. When he does, the Democrats will immediately attempt to get him expelled. He may very well get expelled. <laughs> I think it would, again, I think it would bite them in the ass. It might uh, cause some secessionary rhetoric among um, Dixieland uh, red staters who are, they'll see it as overreach. They'll see it as the establishment attempting to fuck around with the will of their population. They won't be 100% wrong, by the way, in making this claim. Although then, uh, the Democrats will come out and call them Nazis. See, you can think two or three chess moves ahead here. You can sort of see how it's lining up. But as far as trying to aim their guns on Trump, yeah, the Democrats were going to do that. It was a matter of when, basically. Once Franken and Conyers were out, it was clear they're going to try to use that as a, as a, a way to uh, ingratiate themselves to get more support. So basically, they've realized that Trump did not collude with Russia, number one. Now, the Russian investigation can take out the Flins and Manaforts, who don't even work with Trump anymore. He fired them uh, a long time ago. They can nail them to the wall. And Mueller has to then come out and sort of mumble about Tony Podesta because it relates to money laundering that happened a fucking half decade ago and has nothing to do with Trump at all. But it's not going to cause Trump to be impeached. The attempt to impeach him from two days ago, of course, it fell through in the House with half the Democrats voting against it. They're like, you know, it's not going to happen. Even if we were to successfully impeach him, which there's like a 99% chance we never will, there's no way that the Senate's going to remove him from office. They won't even take up the proceedings. They'll just say, oh, oh, the House voted to impeach. Oh, wonderful, yeah. They would give him a golf clap. And Trump would come out and laugh and say, oh, look at these weak Democrats. They did. They can't argue with me. They uh, can't outmaneuver me, so they're just trying to get rid of me. See, the establishment wants me gone. And he would win, by the way, if he were to say something like that, if you try. If you try and fail to impeach, his approval will rise significantly. Because remember, a lot of people who supported Trump in the election were essentially anti-Democrat voters because they were pissed at the DNC. They were pissed at Clinton, or they were pissed at Donna Brazile, or they were pissed that Bernie Sanders got screwed. So they voted against the Democrats. They're not Republicans. They're not on the right. They voted for Trump to punish you. There are admittedly a lot of people who voted against Trump more than for the Democrats too. Plenty of people would have voted third party if they didn't think that there was a chance Trump would have won. Of course, a lot of them, <laughs> towards the end, a lot of them didn't think that. So that's why the libertarians did. You know, they hit double digits in a dozen states. 
That hasn't happened. You know, it's been a long time since a third party had a showing in the double digits outside of the home state of whoever happens to be uh, uh, leading the group. Oddly enough, I think Gary Johnson did more poorly in his home state than in a couple of others, if I remember correctly. I could be totally wrong. I might be thinking of a different race. When you sort of pour over these statistics, uh, you know, going back half a century, so it does get a little bit mixed up. By the way, look at the election morph that I did. If you want to talk about how demographics are never stable, uh, and, you, and you want to be more sane when you're trying to uh, prognosticate on political topics, you can't think things are linear and move in one direction forever, and they're also not a pendulum. They can be a far more unpredictable than that. you got to keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes it takes 8, 12 years, and take three cycles. Now, or more for something to fully shift. Right now, we're undergoing a paradigm shift. Um, we don't know necessarily yet what direction it goes. And actually, the Democrats uh, have to react to the Trump wave before we know anything about what happens next. That's why you have to wait till the midterms to judge 2020 fairly. You can't make predictions now. I give Trump an advantage based primarily on economics, uh, to tell the truth at this point. The Democrats realize he's not going to get impeached because of the Mueller stuff. Like, Mueller would have already thrown him against the wall. Don't you think, at this point, with the ability to openly threaten basically anybody under the sun, he would have gotten info linking Trump to things that were improper if he actually were going to find wrongdoing? And by the way, again, big recommendation is that what they should do is just drag the case out for the next three years and not talk about it too much and let Mueller come out and, and say his decision after Trump's out of office. Either one term or two terms, doesn't, you know, whichever one. The reason being, a large proportion of the U.S. population's social alienation will skyrocket when the decision is made. It doesn't matter if Trump is indicted or not indicted. Regardless, somebody's pissed. Millions of people. Think about the ramifications of this. Especially if you indict, I would say, because the right wing tends to be more heavily armed. Although, the left wing tends to be more generally violent than the right wing. So, you know, it sort of evens out, I suppose, after all. And Antifa is more violent than the average right wing militia, so-called. Most of these militias are paintball clubs, but they look scary to the left, I guess. They can't tell the difference between an airsoft gun and an, act and an actual, you know, hunting rifle. They don't know the difference. They can't, they're not sure. So now they're just saying, please, Mr. Trump, well, the people have alleged sexual impropriety, so please resign. Yes, the president of the United States is going to resign based solely on allegations because your party wants to grandstand after letting go of, of a couple of politicians who are being pervy. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. See, the problem is in those cases, there is evidence of wrongdoing. This is why the GOP needs to expedite the process of getting rid of Fahrenheit. Are you insane? We're going to put it before the ethics committee. No, 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 no. Call for him to resign and make it clear he gets no support. He'll be a leper in your own party. Tell him, look, you know, behind closed doors, you tell him this. You say, you want to keep your pension? That nice, cushy uh, pension that you get for being a politician? Well, if you get removed, if we have to expel you, which trust me, we will if you refuse to leave, you get nothing. You also probably get sued again or something. You know, are there other people? They might be involved. Then you t then in the open you say, oh well, we're not we're not going to uh, go before any committee. We're just going to call on him to resign because it's improper. We've got evidence because the settlement was made. As far as I know, that never happened with Roy Moore. It never happened with Donald Trump. It never happened with it never happened with Takei, To tell the truth, a lot of people on the right assume that he's a pervert. You know, you do realize part of the reason I think I could be wrong here. And I've, I've said what Takei said prior was definitely creepy, let's face it. Uh, that's definitely very much true. Takei hangs around with people who make a lot of sexually charged jokes, thereby making it look like he's, I think, more pervy than he necessarily even is. And some of it goes a little beyond just a little bit pervy. Doesn't Trump have the same problem? Yeah. He says something piggish to Billy Bush, which he claims was a joke, and then apparently in private claims he never said at all <laughs> because Melania was upset. I guess Melania and Ivanka were like, "Dad, why were you do why were you talking like that? You we owe, you owe us an explanation." Oh, don't worry, it was it was a, the, you know it was Photoshop for music, basically Photoshop for audio. They used an editing program, says Donald. Now, Billy Bush was lying to you all the time. Don't, don't, I have to come out and own up to it in public, but in private, trust me, it's not even real. Basically, apparently what he did, that's again, an allegation. It does sound like a Trump move, though, to tell the truth. 
the funny part is it's, it's uh, fucking hilarious more than anything else. But Trump talking about doing the sugar daddy thing is it, that's not a crime. You can't impeach somebody. You can't reasonably expect someone to resign for being a bit piggish. Again, like with my last video, when are the when are the Democrats going to disown JFK and FDR for doing basically the same thing? Or LBJ? Of course, they don't like to talk about LBJ over the whole Vietnam thing. But what about JFK? You hold him up on a pedestal. You say, oh, he was such a wonderful man. You know, he hated, hated communism, by the way. I don't know if you re or, uh, remember that one. Basically, the standard bearers of the Democrats are threefold. FDR, as a, the standard bearer that they use for fiscal matters, oddly enough, and like foreign policy. JFK, the charismatic young figurehead, and then Bubba Bill, the modern neoliberal. Those are the three people they really hold up on, on pedestals. The Democrats, who, in a partisan sense. I'm not talking about actual liberals. Real left-wingers, I think, they don't have time for Bubba Bill's neoliberalism. FDR, to them, was, was also a bigot, which is very much true. And then JFK, is they would like JFK, I think, but then, you know, he's like, a oh, war complex, and, you know, atomic weapons, so maybe not so much into that either. You know, the actual left is more like a hippie. Not gonna fucking like some career politician just because they have a fucking D after their name and call themselves a socialist. FDR was a, a moron. He was a bitter cripple who, who loved war. He loved killing civilians, and he was a total bigot. He also uh, sexually harassed people around him on a fairly regular basis, if truth be told. JFK was the most rapacious president we've ever had. People give him a pass for being charismatic and suave and making it look like it was all consensual, but he's banging people who are working for him half the time. Wouldn't you think, if Trump were to do that, do you think he would get away with it? Uh, I don't think so. I'd be, you know, for one thing, he's, you know, what, 30 years older than JFK was. And in all honesty, maybe he wouldn't be ranked as handsome as JFK. He's also not as well-spoken. He's not quite as coherent. He has some problems getting his point across sometimes. I think his brain moves too quickly for his fucking lips sometimes. He's a smart dude, but he's not the best speaker in the world. So you see, he wouldn't get away with like doing exactly what JFK did. If, if he were to come out and say tomorrow, oh yeah, you know, I've had like a dozen affairs since I've been in the White House. Don't, you know, it's all consensual. And even if he could parade these women out and they all said it was consensual, he'd be impeached. They would throw him against the wall for it. And then he would come out and say, oh, you do realize JFK did the same thing. You know, where was his impeachment? Oh, yeah, diff different times. Yeah, back when the Democrats were liberal and they didn't care so much about moralism. They just wanted to balance the economy and be free and fight communism. You know, back when liberal meant, hey, you know, <laughs> classically liberal. We believe in freedom and liberty and things like that. You know, fuck them now. No, you're a Nazi if you believe in free speech. You're, you're a rapist if you act like people generally acted 50 fucking years ago when two of these Democrats that we love so much were presidents, including FDR. FDR, who couldn't really even walk without a, a, a weird, weird, like, gyroscopic array of some sort that he had to, like, sort of lean on, attached to his legs and crutches. He could sort of shuffle a few steps by moving his hips like a fucking, like the penguin or something. Uh... You know, in, a, in a literal sense, it's what he would have looked like if he weren't being very staunch about it and having his, his son basically hold him up. Uh, yeah, he, he banged his secretary on multiple occasions. You, you, again, do you think that he married Eleanor Roosevelt for her looks and her sexual appeal? Or do you think it was a marriage of business and political convenience to look like the upstanding, you know, sort of American family? To make it also to make him maybe look better by comparison, you know, he's got his he fucking hideous wife. Uh, he's not very good looking either, but he looks more normal, I suppose, is the idea. So people wouldn't think too much about the fact that he was, you know, half. Yeah, uh, he, he would admit to the public, oh yeah, you know, I have like back problems and leg problems. You know, I have trouble walking. Uh, really, he was totally crippled and took him a lot of effort to even shuffle with braces on his legs. I'd love to see the Democrats call for us to basically smash all the statues of FDR and JFK and uh, burn up all those uh, brass statues of Clinton that we've got. Get rid of their presidential libraries, get rid of all their museums, burn all their memorabilia, get rid of your JFK pin, get rid of this FDR sign. It's symbols of rape. It's symbols of sexual assault. They should have been impeached for, for you know, harm towards women and... and, and uh, few of their cases possibly towards men as well now, it's funny obama's like the only uh de one of the few democrats that ran a successful second term without some sort of sexual skin because remember the others jimmy carter single term truman i think truman single term 
Yeah, Truman was a Democrat. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes they sort of run together around that period of time. There are a lot of presidents about which even people who are into politics don't know too much about. I do know Truman was genocidal, though. <laughs> Sorry about the whole atomic bomb thing, Japan. Sorry for that, you know. No, although it did, it created great movies, like Godzilla and all these other <laughs> cult classics from after. Uh, yeah, the, I, I think uh, in that case, as far as art and culture, when Atomic War was actually a positive effect on the world, oddly enough. No, seriously, look at all the weird uh, psychotic music of the 80s. You wouldn't have gotten that without paranoia. Communists minus nuclear weapons is a sad communist. <laughs> they become a lot less scary. Oh, don't worry about those Arctic... It's like, ask backwards technology in every other way. Uh, they, they didn't have nukes in the world, you know, it wouldn't be a Cold War. It'd be a hot war. Uh, that would have been over pretty quickly, honestly, after World War II anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, it's funny to see them call for Trump to resign. Ooh, Mr. Trump, you've been a naughty boy. You should resign from your post. Look, 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 look. We got Franken to resign. Yeah, because Al Franken is, is the president of the United States. It's a little bit different threshold, number one. And number two, again, proof matters. Evidence matters. Call me when you have a picture of Trump doing perverted stuff. And I don't mean that skit with Giuliani where he's like motorboating his chest with Giuliani cross-dressing. By the way, you should look up Trump Giuliani cross-dressing. Really, really funny skit that they apparently is part of a Republican fundraiser or something. It is a little bit weird. In all honesty, it's kind of weird to see their dynamic be like that. Uh, but Trump likes the showman stuff. And him bragging to Billy Bush about things he probably half the time didn't even successfully do. I'm sorry, that doesn't compel me to think that he should resign. No, I think it's just, it's still, a year later, it's still sour grapes from some of these people and a lack of awareness that indeed they lost the election. They feel like Clinton should have won because of a popular vote or a Nazi or, or deplorable, whatever. They feel like she should be there and that Trump shouldn't even be the president, so they don't mind abusing him on a daily basis and preventing, uh, pre uh, pretending that he's not even the president. It's like it, they, it's, they've got cognitive dissonance. They can't even bring themselves to realize he is the president, I think, of the United States sometimes. That's about all. Peace out.